Uh, hello, I'm Stephen Taylor. Um, this summer marks an anniversary for me too. It'll be 40 years since I walked across St. James and Green Park and went to work for IP Sharp Associates and became a colleague of a number of others of you who also work for IP Sharp Associates. We had an office at 180 Piccadilly in those days, which was a repurposed brothel. Uh, very, very, very bountiful in bathrooms. And uh, but we then moved down to offices in uh, um, in Victoria, in Buckingham Palace Road. And um, in those days, I knew even less than I knew than I know today. Uh, but I learned most of what I learned in those days from uh, my colleagues and. On reflection, looking back, I learned a good deal of it informally. We, some of us worked together on projects, others we just hung out. We went to coffee together, we had lunch together, even drinks down the pub occasionally. And uh, I learned a huge amount, even from questions that my colleagues would ask. So, um, I'd hear a question and think, gosh, yes, I needed to know the answer to that, and I didn't even know that I needed to know the answer to that. <laughs> And I'd hear people talk about the projects they were doing and approaches they were using, and I was thinking, gosh, I could use that. Um, I work from home these days, as I know quite a number of you do, or dispersed, scattered around the world. At any rate, I think few of us work in those um, office environments, which are kind of rich in casual interactions where you can learn so much by serendipity. And I've been trying for some years to recover some of those connections. In theory, we are blessed with conferences like this and the internet all the time, it should be possible. In practice, those kind of casual interactions can be quite difficult. But, um, uh, Gil in Sweden and I have um, found one which seems to be working for us, so I'm um, uh, inviting you to share that. We we restarted this um, as sessions in working with our respective apprentices. We called it the APL room. And the first part, its first manifestation of it, is on a Slack team. Does, have any of you encountered Slack? A few. Okay. The word I heard was that it was replacing email for team communications a lot of programs and it's um, a chat room and um, so much of it just looks like chat but it's kind of um, very well organized for programmers as you can see the APL room is a team that I'm a member of there you can see here we have a stream of chat and um, that's on and the room has a number of channels. The APL room currently has 12 channels and I'm a member of seven of those it seems. Uh, what have we got? This is a channel which is discussing dialogue release 15. Dialog IDE, the uh, Dialog Cookbook Project, and the APL Tree Libraries. And so, the, uh, there's an announcement here. And the um, chat is written, oh uh, yes, I was about to announce that. Morton's announced on um, the announcements that the BAA 2016 is underway, and I guess we could announce that we have a hashtag now, which we said, Morton, what did we say? BAA 2016? Click on the link. I do. Bah. No, I'm not going into Twitter. Yeah. Uh, you might have noticed that I put back ticks around the BAA um, 2016. This is part of a formatting convention called 
markdown, which Kai will be talking about much later. But, um, you know, it's a way of writing HTML um, in a simplified form for writers. Uh, and, um, uh, and Slack conversations basically honor that convention. Uh, on Slack, we can um, pass links, share files, and so on. And I can see from this that um, my friend is Drew, Gil in Sweden, Kai Yeager in the back of the room, and Morton in the middle of the room are all currently logged in. And I can have direct private conversations with them or with com uh, combinations of them. Uh, if you'd like to join us, send um, a message. You need an invitation to get in. So the, if you have an email address with certain um, domains like dialogue and so on, um, you find that you can um, just um, join in. Um, so we've been using this for kind of casual um, chat and asking questions, and I get to ask about things I don't know how to do and get people's opinions on this, that, this, that, and the other in a way that reminds me a bit of what it was like working in an office. On Wednesday afternoons, we've been having um, video sessions for an hour. It's a 3 p.m. Wednesday afternoon hangout. And uh, this, again, has been fairly casual. We sometimes don't even decide the subject until we start. But we've been using for that a, um, a web service called appear.in. Um, we're currently broadcasting on GoToMeeting. Um, many of you will use services such as Skype, which will do video calls and screen sharing. What we like about appear.in is that there's no app, there's no registration. You just need to use a Chrome or Firefox browser to go to a URL and you're somehow magically in. I will demonstrate. Okay. So here is my Chrome browser. Type appear dot in the APL ring. I've not tried this before while currently logged into code meeting, so this is not guaranteed to work. Okay. Um, normally this would take my webcam and um, start using it. Hello, someone else is connecting. Hi. Hello, Gil. Uh, we get, as you see, a, a, a chat stream here. If your audio is not, um, not on. And um, this service will take up to eight um, people simultaneously. No charge, no app, no download, no registration. You're welcome to join casually. So currently that's 3 p.m. every Wednesday. We do a, a hangout and um, what we last talked about um, yesterday, uh, Wednesday it was uh, how to store configuration settings to you, the relative virtues of any files and um, registry entries. All right, I'm going to leave the room here before I blow up go to meeting. Video quality is good, thank you. So that's text, uh, chat by text, that's um, more, more intense kind of round tables using the video conferencing. Um, there's also code sharing. Now sharing code is something which um, APL people are notoriously bad at doing. Is that fair? There have been attempts over the years to establish libraries of common code that we can share. Uh, and probably the best effort that I know of this is the APL tree library on the APL wiki, which Kai 
has done huge work to um, to, to make presentable and, and shareable. Um, but, uh, we're trying to do something similar to that using Git. Is anybody here um, a user of Git? Romulo, I think. Yes, okay. So we've got on GitHub a repository called the APL room and uh, which you can find your way to. And there's some um, projects up on that. Objects menu recently added um, which adds extra features to the dialog IDE. Simple APL neural net, APL image features and um, a namespace of code for handling dictionaries, tables and maps. Um, we're hoping that um, Git, because it's already more widely in use than the APL wiki, will draw more contributions um, and, and uh, um, enable people to work on branches and add features as it has for other APL communities. And what I'd like to do is to show you now how I'm using Git. This is for the people who are not already using Git. You can, um, well, what I'm not going to do is give a tutorial on how to use Git, <coughs> which is a um, potentially very deep subject and I'm really only a novice in it. But I'll show you where I found the best source of information. If you Google for a Git guide, you will find many of them. If you add to your search, no deep shit. <laughs> Which I believe you will find memorable. <laughs> you will find a simple guide to Git, which advertises itself as no deep shit. <laughs> Probably the most important thing in this is to use Git from the command shell. There are um, GUI clients which you can download and which will attempt to manage these things for you. Um, I've managed to get myself well confused with two or three of these, but um, we've got in the in an APL room session the other week, a very good tutorial, a very good coaching session from Nick Nikolov at Dialog, who showed us the basic steps of using the command shell. And I've been working very happily with that. So the rest of what I want to show you is um, not the kind of tutorial which you can find many of on YouTube and so forth, which will show you how to set up a repository and change one file and so forth. The trivial changes. I'd like to show you what it's currently like working inside a, a project which is managed and published by Git. And the public face of that is up on GitHub uh, under my account 5JT and it's known as Dialog Cookbook which is a mixture of software and manuscript files. But they're all being managed as if the whole thing was software. And I will take you, take us now to where that project lives. Here's my shortcut. And the project is living in Dropbox where, where the, work, the working files are in Dropbox and I share them with my co-author Kyle. But locally on this machine I've got that mapped to my Z drive. And here's a brief tour. So we're now looking at the um, 
my working folder for the project. It contains a folder of manuscripts and the manuscript is praise the Lord not a word file or even a collection of word files. We're writing this in markdown. You see those MD file extensions and um, currently I'm doing my markdown in um, using my standard text editor notepad plus plus. I'll take a moment to show you what that looks like. For, any, for anyone who's um, done a who's produced edit or edited a very large document in Word, uh, this is such a breath of fresh air. Uh, basically, the, the big difference is instead of having to manage all the rich and deep formatting that, um, that Word can produce, um, I basically tag things as headings, plain text, and so on. Um, let's see, it's packaging script. Here you can see markdown in conventions in action, uh, including embedded code, both in, embedded in the paragraphs and in code blocks. So forth. Uh, I think it's fair to say um, that Kai, that both you and I become big fans of Markdown in the last year. Yeah. Very much so, yes. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay, on the left I've got, um, I'm editing the script which go with the different chapters of the book. And these are your familiar dialogue files, oh, that's oh those are my notes, that's right. Ah, that's the manifest for the books which describe all the files that go into the book. All right, so the, these are the source files for the, for the book itself. Here are the code files with the different versions of the app. <coughs> that one got a bit messy, it needs a bit of cleaner. And um, for those of you who care about these things, the app is built by a Diap. Does anybody use Diap files to assemble workspaces? Yes, 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 okay. Well, then I'll show you what it looks like. I double click the Diap, boots and loads the application, which I can edit in the usual way, or if I'm feeling brave, I can edit it in the notepad file. Um, in the dialog files in Notepad. Given the um, presentation we just had, I thought you might like to see the use of the new file primitives. Have a look briefly. Probably, yes, yes, yes. Is that a more? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> years, years ago, in a, another of those casual conversations with a colleague, I got persuaded of the virtue of avoiding numeric constants in code where a 
the constant stands for something. <laughs> so my variant operator on quad ninfo, instead of having a um, a neat little one, as C ninfo wildcard where C is my constant namespace. But um, I'm in, I've been using those file primitives and yes, there's the quad n get to read a file and get its text, its encoding and its new line character, which I then use when putting out um, right into parser. Thank you for the new file primitives. <laughs> they work really well. Um, and they meant quite a lot of reorganization of the early chapters of the book, which were previously relying on classes from the APL tree. Nice work. All right. Yes, that's going to do it. Put that away. <coughs> So, back to my project folder, that was my code. Um, this project uh, folder in Dropbox is also shared with our web publishing service, leanpub.com, which takes markdown manuscripts and turns them into books. Have you managed to get in Dropbox with Thank you for the question. <laughs> Here's the preview folder, which contains the latest previews generated by LeanPub. I'll just open that up and you can close the side. I think we had to we had to have a little talk with the people at LeanPub initially. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they've, um, you can now declare APL as a language and you get the APL um, three, uh, Unicode 385, APL 385 Unicode font. It's technically today not a problem at all. Many websites only huge for us by that one small concession on their part we we're able to take our manuscript files in, in, in markdown and they get generated as a book PDF like this as you, as you can see the representation of APL code is completely satisfactory if you had any luck with mathematical equations I haven't tried those. So the question is, have we had any luck with mathematical equations? Um, and um, uh, no, not tried those at all. Uh, Don't think we're planning any other. It's entirely possible. Have you been using the LeanPub service? Yeah. Oh, right. I'm not sure. Yeah. It sounds right because their focus is um, primarily on technical books. So it would make sense that they've got support for the equations and formally implemented. I think you can drop into 
low tech country. Yes. Yeah. It was a small town with it. Is it similar? Uh, a resource no, pool? Marked up. Yes, it's great. Uh, but I will leave further discussion of markdown to Kai, who's going to spend some time with this afternoon. Coming back to my uh, project folder, uh, by now it's, it should be apparent there are files in here which I want to track in my version control, source, con source control management, and others in here which are um, which I don't care about. Like my shortcut to the Lean Pub manual, I don't need that trapped under version control. All right. Now, uh, earlier on when I showed you the No Deep Ship Guide, it had, a, it had links in it to where you could download and install Git. And I did that a while ago, and so it appears in my old programs under GitHub. We can see we can see the um, uh, the, the GUI tool there. But I'm going to do as Nick Nikolov coached me to do and use the Git shell. This is this in Windows is based in the PowerShell which produces a rather nice a caption on the window eventually. There we go. And I'll put that over here. As you can see the caption now reads posh git. And having changed my, um, my my current directory over to Z, um, the shell has recognized this is now a repository under Git management. And I'll ask for a summary of status. All right. This is telling me that um, my, my current changes are I've modified the README text file and I've added a new manuscript called Settings. That's the new chapter. Well, my new manuscript is also going to need a new version of the code. So I'll take a copy of that. Call it V4. Toss out all the stuff I don't need. Just most of it. I've now made myself a new copy of the of the code folder. Let's see what Git has to say about that. So I um, repeat my request for status, and it's noticed that I've added the um, new code folder. So 
these are red red lines. I haven't um, uh, get to notice the changes to my working directory. I need to put these on the stage, which is so to speak a little a holding area waiting for the changes to be committed. And then when I'm uh, when I'm persuaded, I believe that all the changes I've made to these things kind of go together and are um, worth committing to the main version, then I'll do that. So let's stage the um, readme. Let's stage the code version 4. Anything there. And let's um, stage the new manuscript. Now in green, I've got everything that's staged and ready to go, and I've got nothing showing as red. Um, that is, all my, there's no untracked changes in there. <clears throat> now with apologies to Kai, I'm going to commit these as if they were really all finished and ready. And I'll put those with a message. So this is my comment about the commit. Hashtag B A A two O one six. So those are all now committed into the main project. And if I were feeling bold enough, I could then push them up to GitHub as well. But that's a step further than I want to go today. So that's what it's like for me working inside um, uh, inside source control management with Git. Any changes I make, it catches um, and tracks them. And of course, if I um, if I discover I've been up a blind alley, I can roll back to an earlier version point of source control management. That's about all I want to show you today. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Stephen.